Good morning, or good afternoon, good evening, wherever you are. This is Pat Hood from Passions and Pastimes, and I'm back with Makers Monday to show you how to make your own Viking knit. And I'll also show you some examples of jewelry made from Viking knit. Um, so let's get started right at the beginning. Um, I made a few notes. So for Viking knit. Um, I suggest you use 24 or 22 gauge wire. I've done it with 20. It's very challenging for the fingers and for the draw plate. You'll need a pair of wire cutters. Here's some examples of the 24 gauge wire. And you'll need uh, probably also a pair of needle nose or chain nose pliers. You might need something like this, like a little pick. If you need to adjust things then you need um, oh that's number four sorry and then you need a dowel a pencil a pen or a stick and this is what I'm talking about so here's some pieces of dowel they're about four and a half inches long this one's shorter um, there's another one different thicknesses here's a pen it's about the same thickness as this dowel this is uh, a pen with uh, just the pen barrel. Um, you can also use a pencil. Um, so if you're doing this with a group and you don't have enough pieces of dowel, then you can also substitute, as I said, pencils or pens. Find yourself some sticks. Dowels are fairly inexpensive. Now, this is the design of the wire weaving or knitting that you do for Viking knit. But for the first step, you need to make a flower, um, that's what we call it, out of a scrap of wire that is either four times or five times the circumference of your dowel. And it needs to have a couple of ends sticking off. Now, one way to do it is to make two figure eights, but I'll show you some examples of how I do it. This is probably the most challenging part. This is what the flower looks like. And it does, you can see it doesn't have to be really even. Uh, when you wind it around your, your, your dowel, it might look like that, and then you um, spread it out. And this is what it looks like on the top of the uh, the dowel. This is actually a one, two, three. This is a five strand um, bit of weaving. So it just again has five petals. Or um, So I'm going to use this biggest piece of dowel. And I'm going to use some gold wire, a scrap of gold wire. I don't think... I have any other scraps that are quite long enough. So I tend to leave my wire on the uh, reel so that I don't cut it too short. When I start this, I leave an end just because it's easier to work with. I wrap around once and then, and then I cross the wires. And here's the secret. I turn the dowel so that it twists the wires together. Now, some people can keep going and do another twist. I find for myself, I like to go then opposite the first one. So this is where I'm making a figure eight. Wrap around, hold where the wires cross. There, you can see they cross. Twist the dowel. I find if I twist my fingers, I'm twisting the wrong way. Then, I make another figure eight. Oh, I did untwist that. So let's go over here where you can see it. There's my eight. I'll put that in here. Wrap the wire around. It's got it crossed to the center. Twist it. And then go to the other side. Wrap my wire around. Hold it in the center, twist it, and you can twist it once or twice. Once, just have to twist it enough that the the flower shape is secure, 
and then trim off from the spool of wire. And here is my flower ready to start. Some people have you going, uh, or some instructions, sorry, not some, some people, have you say, okay, one, two, three, four, and then cut it off, and then, or five if you're going to do a five strand braid, and then you got to twist all the petals into shape, and I find that this always you could wrap it somehow anyway I find this always gets me into some sort of trouble where I don't end up with everything the way I should and uh, maybe if I wrap it through there and twist I hadn't tried that before well that works that holds them oh, okay so i um, all the different ways I've I've tried to do this I hadn't thought of putting the wire through the center like that so there's another one um, I find for myself and when I'm teaching especially when I'm teaching kids doing the two figure eights is how they get it to get started on their own so as I said the flower is just for you getting started if you are using a pen barrel um, one of the things you can do is you can stick the ends of the wire down through the top of the pen barrel and then put the flower piece into shape. Um, I find just sitting it on top of the dowel, bending the four petals down. You don't have to twist this together. You just want to sort of have it out of the way. And so here is your starting. You have one, two. They can cross or not cross. If it crosses that's fine if it doesn't cross that's fine for the first row but basically this is your starting point if you think you're going to be having trouble holding the flower part in place when you're starting then put on some masking tape or maybe an elastic band around there um, I've done this often enough that I don't uh, do that but whatever you need to get comfortable to start then you need your starting wire once you're comfortable doing this then you can use a nice long you know arm's length piece of wire where's my start there we go until that point I would suggest you use you know a little more than a foot I'm gonna I'm going to use about 14 inches. Okay, so here's my starting piece of wire. You want to make sure that the ends are nice and straight, that you don't have any kinks. I have a little bit of a kink there. If you have some nylon uh, pliers, you can uh, straighten it out, or since the 24 gauge is narrow enough. Um, or is fine enough you can use to do it with your fingers so here's the shape that I said we we're going to work our wire in each pedal or pair each pair of pedals is going to get a little loop of wire you actually work it looks like you're um, going from left to right but you actually feed the wire in from right to left and make your loop. And you'll see that in a minute. So that's there's our first row. And then the next row is going to loop into the first row. And you're going to keep doing that until you get the length of wires that you need for whatever you're making. So this one, I think, is about four. Four and a half inches and you can see it doesn't matter how long your dowel is you just twist it up if you need to make it longer same with this one here okay I've got you don't go so tightly that it can't move but then you just twist it up if you need more space within to work when you're doing your Viking knit
So let's get started. First row is the most difficult. Um, I'm going to just hold a piece of wire up parallel and if you want you can put the one end and wrap it around here just to keep it out of the way. You do need a piece of, of wire to finish off this end uh, so you want to leave a couple inches and I've gone down and now I'm going to use the wire from the right hand side. I'm going to go um, I'm just going to ignore this left hand part. I'm going to go in be or under these two petals that are side by side from right to left. And then I'm going to pull the wire so that it makes a loop. This one's a little misshapen for what we'll do in the end, but just ignore that. That's just You have to get started somewhere. Then I turn my dowel. Where am I? My, my cloth is sliding. I'm gonna, as I said, this is where you might find it the most difficult and where you might want to um, tape this down, but I, I'm, I'm just getting it here in my fingers. So here's the next two petals. I'm going under the two petals so that I'm actually like tying them together with the wire, making a loop. There's a little sort of a U shape here, like a smile. Then I turn to the right, and you can see I'm holding down this little loop with my finger. That just that that helps in the process, helps you make loops that are uh, loops and little U's that are equal sizes. So that's what you want to try to do. So this one and this one are about the same size. There's my loop. Hold it down, moving around. Don't worry that the, if these two petals are far apart, we're gonna pull them together. There we go. There's my little loop. And then we're almost back at the beginning. So this is um, where it's just a little tricky. I'm going to undo that. Now, when you're actually doing your Viking knit, you're going to be going under the where the two wires cross. So where the two the blue wires cross. So I'm going to be taking my next stitch by going. Let me lift that up a little bit. There we go. In here, under where they cross. So I'm going to just hold that down out of the road. And there's my loop for my second row. I'm going to put this out of the way because I need that at the end. And this will become more clear as we go around. Now, this is where you might need something like this, a little pick or a crochet hook or anything that you can use to sort of pull the wire down so you can see the little smile. <coughs> Excuse me. Um, under where the two wires cross, the two blue wires, and I make my next loop. Turn to the right, going from right to left under where the two wires cross. Pull it. This one's a little shorter, but that doesn't matter. This will all, uh, this one's going to be longer. Um, we'll uh, try to adjust as we go along. So I'm going to put it under here. Whoops, don't go one. I don't want it to go under I don't want it going under this gold wire, the starting wire. I just want it to go under the blue wires. And you can always push the starting wires out of the way with your fingernail or with another tool. If you have to, you can put the wire in and grab it with some pliers. You can see, uh, the little nicks on my fingernails. I tend to do everything with my fingernails. So I'm going to make this one a little shorter because it's kind of long. So I'm going to pull it back. There we go. So it's a little shorter. So we're trying to get an even amount as we go around. And don't worry if your first three or four rows aren't particularly even. Let me pull this one up. Sorry if it's going out of focus. There we go. Pull this one up. 
There. There we go. Pull my loop. Yeah, we're getting there. On row three. So this is something that takes minimal supplies. You need your, I mean, at minimum, you need one roll of wire. You can make your, your flower out of the, uh, ah, I had to answer the phone. So let me put this back together. It's not okay if, if it's okay if it falls apart like this, you just stick your dowel back in. So we're on the third row. And we're just start, you can see our short our wire's pretty short, that's okay. Under there. It's harder to do it when I'm looking in the camera to make sure I'm filming well. And but than it is to do if you're just uh sitting there doing it on your own. I guess I was saying that you just need minimal supplies. I'm gonna pull this one down. Uh, a little more space. There we go. Uh, basically, you need a pair of wire cutters. Some of the needle nose pliers have a wire cutter section in them. So, at minimum, you need a stick or a pencil, a roll of wire, and a cutter pliers to do this. Oh, and in the end, you're always going to need your draw plate. And I'll give you the the dimensions for draw plate holes at the end if you want to make your own. That's probably the most expensive part of the whole set of tools. So let me just take this around. And you can, I mean, the wire's very flexible, and you shouldn't hesitate to pull and manipulate the wire. You can see I'm putting a little bit of strength on there to get what... Uh, to get loops that are consistent, close together. They don't have to be perfect because as I said, the, um, the differences come out uh, when you do the uh, pulling through the draw plate. Now, if you get to something like that and it's uh, too short for you to pull, then your pliers come into play and you pull it. And after a while, you can see you don't have to hold on to the flower because it's... Um, and I've gotten to where this is too short to go to the next spot. So this is where I'm going to make my join. Okay, so you can see that it's gone from right to left. And it's I've made my, my piece of wire go straight down. I'm going to cut my next piece of wire. And I'm going to make it quite a bit longer. So I'm going to make it as long as my arm. And you really want to make this a size at which you're comfortable. There we go. So don't don't overdo it because you don't want your wire getting all twisted up. And so there's my new end. How am I going to join this? Well, this is this actually is quite straightforward. You turn your work upside down so that your end is pointing toward the ceiling or pointing to the sky. And you go in from right to left underneath as if you were making a, a loop. Now you're, and then you're gonna pull your end down so your ends are about the same length. You can leave them that way or you can twist them together so that they are not um, interfering and then you're going to turn the work back uh, right side up. I didn't twist these well enough that they're staying together. Let me do that. Okay, so here's our work. We went, so we went upside down, right to left, flipped it over. Now, because we were upside down and we went right to left, our loop is in exactly the right spot to keep continuing. So there you can see our, our new loop. We continue to the right, we find our length, our end, and you can see as I'm, I'm sort of off the camera, I'm pulling the wire smooth each time. So I'm going to hold this down, and I'm just going to keep going, right to left, pull it, 
and then uh, pull it gently and then pull it tighter as I get uh, closer to that spot. Um, sometimes the end gets a little bent. Right to left. Pull it through. So this is, um, if you're into slow craft, you could think of this as a slow craft. It's quite, once you're, it's quite meditative once you uh, get going. And it's one of those things you can, like, I put my stuff in a little pouch, carry it around with me. Um, when I'm working with kids, um, I often will give them a little spool with just one piece of wire on it, like a, have them get started and then have an extra piece of wire to carry. Um, so they can work on it on their own once they're com com comfortable making the join. And then they have to come back to me, um, who has the person with the wire cutters, um, when they want their next piece of wire. And also then I can check their work. So I've gone around and I'm back to where my join is. So this is my little trick. And I lift this up, this these joins, uh, joined wires up so that there's space to go underneath them. Then I press them down again because you want your next loop to go over top of the join. You don't want it to accidentally go under the join because that'll bring then the uh, extra wire to the surface and you want the wires to stay inside the Viking knit. So we've gone through our join. Um, I want to do at least three rows over the join and then I'll probably snip it off. I'll see how that goes. So one, two, You can see that the longer wire is a little more, a little trickier to work with, or you have more to handle each time. Three, but the fewer joins you have, the better. So we're back to where the join is. So again, I'm going to lift this up just so that there's enough space under there. Because sometimes when it's pressed down, you and you go to, you go to put this in, it gets stuck. So you want it to go under the those joined wires. And that's something I learned as I, I practiced with this. Where's my, oh, this is my, that, uh, that made for a better join. So we've just gotten around again to the uh, join and you have to make sure, make sure your wire is not going underneath those. And I'm going to do another round to the join and then I'll show you then how I neaten things off. When I'm working with kids, usually, you know, age seven up, they have no problem with the wire. The younger ones, I've worked as young as four. Sometimes they have trouble going right to left under the wire, so I'll do that part for them and then have them uh, pull the wire through and go over to the next location. And I have some mini pliers, mini jewelry pliers, so they always have fun using those. I don't know. Just a second, and I think I'll see if I can find them. Here they are. So then I have these little mini jewelry pliers, and the little ones always find it's great fun to pull the wire through with those. Um, so the last time we, this is going to be my last join, so I'm going to pull it up here so there's space. Go through, push it back down. Oops, sorry about that. I, I banged the camera. Apologize. So make sure this is above those wires pull it into place now I'm going to trim these wires off I'm just going to lift them up 
and trim them here. Put my fingers over the wires, take the wires and put them into my wire bin. Okay. And then from here on, these won't be an issue. And I pulled, managed to pull this one a little bit out of line, so I, I'm going to pull it down just so when I come back here it's not an issue. So I'm going to go and finish going around and around with this wire, and I'll be right back to show you the next join. Okay, so now I'm back ready to do my next join. Now you can see my previous join was right there. So I don't want to join at the same spot. And sometimes if you're very consistent with the lengths of wire that you, you're using and your wraps, then you'll have a tendency to end up at the same spot. So what you need to do is to go one or two past or one or two before, to, before you make your next join so that the joins don't end up all in the same area. It's just uh, good practice. I'm going to... Pull that one through. So here's, I'm ready to do my next join. I should have cut a piece of wire ahead of time. Anyway, I'll just cut a short piece of wire because you've, just to show, whoops, just to show you once more, I have to get the right. I kind of, I think I made a picture of uh, what that looks like. But again, so my I end my wire, I make sure it's not in the same join as before and turn it upside down, go through from left to right as if I were making a loop, come down, go turn it back right side up, and I continue on. Let me just uh, put it through under this one so that the wire is secured. For the next round so there we go and you can make as many joins as you need here's an example um, and you might want to do this for just for yourself where um, I've gone through and joined wires of different colors so we started there's the, the flower actually still on there I didn't cut it off uh, red to copper to red to copper to some gold back to red and you can see now here between the gold and red you can sort of see the join you can sort of see the join inside there but once you've pulled the wire through the draw plate it's very difficult to see where the joins are and when it's a single color this is uh a there, a single color, it's very difficult to see. There's a join right there, I can see it, but because I've done a lot of these. And there's probably another join down at the other end, down here somewhere, but I can't see it. So it's very difficult to see the joins. So, here are some different pieces that I've done. This is the, uh, this is the same as this, only this is four. You can see it's sort of boxy at this point. This is a five petal, and it's a little rounder, um, and they'll be slightly different when they're drawn through the draw plate. And I have, hmm, I think I'm missing one. Just let me go find it. So I uh, have four examples of what I'd like to show you drawing through the draw plate. Um, I couldn't find my original, tut original tutorial directions that said how many inches of Viking knit you needed to make um, so that you had a specific length. And it really does depend on the wire you use the diameter of the dowel or the pencil that you use um, and how far down through the draw plate that you draw um, your wire. 
when I'm using this small dowel, I tend to figure three, uh, no, two thirds of the length of what I want is what I need to pull. Um, but that uh, doesn't apply for these larger ones. So I've made this one, this is a, a five millimeter dowel. I've made this four and a half inches so that hopefully I will get seven inches out of this when I pull it through the draw plate. Um, this one here is done on the, the uh, nine millimeter dowel. I've done three and a quarter inches. I find that this tends to at least, at least double or not, if not go a little further. Um, and just for comparison's sake, I've done these two. This is the four and this is the five round. Um, these are just two and a half inches long and I'll put them through the draw plate and uh, see how long they end up being. And I did this more of a, as an experiment for myself uh, and for you as well, so that I can jot down some numbers um, for future. And uh, I haven't done any experiments with this big one yet. So, um, but before we do the drawing through the draw plate, I need to show you how to finish off um, the weaving that we've done. So once you've uh, done your, your Viking net, as long as you want it, then you take it off of your dowel. So I'll take this one off. Move these out of the road. So take it off your dowel. First thing you do, now I've still got a little join here, so I'm going to trim that. Get rid of my wires. And then you take and just pull this closing wire there. So it closes your end wires. It didn't pull as nicely as I would have liked. Let me pull it. Um, I'm going to just pull it a little bit more with my finger. Okay, so it kind of goes to a point there. At this end, you want to take off your um, flower. I guess if you really wanted to, you could save this wire by untwisting it. Um, I think of this as scrap wire, so I just cut it off. Don't cut your blue wire or your actual night knit, so I just make one. two, three, four, sort of one, one clip per petal, and then carefully pull each petal out. And if I've not clipped them all, then I just go back and sometimes I clip the wrong part. Anyway, this is, as I said, this is scrap wire. There we go. Then those come out. Now this is, uh, this is scrap wire, so let me put that away. Don't want wire hanging around. Okay, so you'll see that this is what your start is like. And now you have four loose loops, so you don't want that. You want to close this off, so that's why you need this long end to start. You take your end back through the loop, so there's through one loop. There we go. And just go gently as you do this. You are going to pull it tight too. You don't want to pull out any of the loops if possible. This is where these little pliers are really good. Three. Sometimes you can get it to go through two loops at a time. There's my wire end hard to see it in the camera here well we'll do this one again so we can see it there it goes through and 
through the last one. So I've put, I've run that um, piece of wire that I started with at the beginning back through all the loops and I'm just going to pull this tight. If you have enough wire, you can go um, back through the loops again, but you do want to keep a little bit of wire to help you run through the draw plate. And if it's too short, well, I'll show you how to deal with that. Okay, so there's one end. There's my other end, and I had two and a half inches here. We'll see what happens to that when we draw it to the draw plate. Here's my uh, four one. You can see that's very square. I'm going to pull the end. Whoops, I didn't tight. Don't worry about that. And there's my beginning part going to cut off my my flower petals put those away do the same thing so i've got one Can I get it through here? Nope. I like to go through um, from the outside to the inside. I have to pull it a little bit so I have enough outside to the inside. My fingers are cold. It's harder to hang on to the wire. Three, and I'm pulling this one a little tighter as I go. Four. And I think I'll go back through the first two. So there we go. So let's pull these through the draw plate. This was the top. This was the top. And we started with two and a half inches. So the first, to use a draw plate, you find what hole, what's the biggest hole, or the, start with your biggest hole, you see if this will pull through. So I'm going to try to hold the plate that way. This is my four strand. I'm going to grab it with some pliers, pull it through the draw plate. And the usual thing is that you pull it through three times or until it's nice and flexible. So that's three times. With that one, I'm going to put this one through three times as well. One. And you want to try to preserve this wire on the end as best you can two if it breaks that's okay three so it's getting a little bit longer but it was already a little bit longer because I pulled the end so let's go through the next straw plate this is number the four-sided one one two three and you can see there is a bigger difference um, it's getting a little more flexible I'm going to keep going with this four-sided one one two
Two. That's pretty flexible. I'm going to keep going. One. Okay, so now we're getting it down to where I had accidentally pulled the end out a little bit, made it skinny. So uh, we're getting closer to where it's the same size all along. Okay, now we go to this one so there's there are there are 12 holes in the draw plate and they start where is I my little piece of paper that does I made a sheet to remind me of the sizes and I Just a second here and I'll find it. Okay, so um, you have 12 holes that start about 12 millimeters and work your way down by one millimeter at a time or 10 or 11 sixteenths and work your way down a millimeter at a time. So let's see how we're doing here. This one end is still a little pointier and narrower than the rest, but you can see how flexible this is. This is the four-sided braid, and we're gone from a length of two and a half inches, I guess I better do it this way, to five inches already. And I'm going to, I could leave it at this length, um, it's perfectly fine for uh, a Viking knit bracelet. It, it part, part of it depends on how thick you want it, but it's still very squarish, and I like it to be more of a, a round um, bracelet. So I'm going to keep going. And I lost my pliers. Oh, there they are. Okay, so... one. This one's pretty flexible so it's not hard to pull through. I've done them with uh, 20 gauge wire. They are so hard you don't pull them through as much as wiggle through. It looks gorgeous but also it's tough doing the knit on your fingers. It's tough on your fingers. I'll see if I can find my example. Okay so this is getting more round. You can see you can see how consistent this is not sure if we can see the joins let's look and see there's um, hmm there's probably a join there and a join somewhere up in there but you can't really see them and we're getting, this is uh, very flexible, would make a nice bracelet. How long are we at now? We were at five inches. We're now at just under six inches. So I'm going to, depending, I'm going to keep going. And depending on how, you can see the size of the, hole I'm going through. It's pulling through quite easily. I'll go through the next one. I think I'm going to stop there. So there's a little more resistance at this one and I do need the pliers. Okay, so this is probably the last one that I'll go through with this particular um, bracelet. There we go. So beautiful, nice, rounded flexible and we're now at 
six inches. So this went, this is a four braid. It went from two and a half inches to six inches. And I went to this uh, one hole from the top, I think, yeah. I go to this hole? No, I didn't. I could go, so I went to the third hole from the end. Uh, I'm going to do the same thing uh, off camera with the five strand braid and show you what, come back and show you what it looks like. So here's the uh, five strand braid. You can see it's a little um, denser because, of course, we had five curls around. Um, I suppose I could try to take this down a little bit more. I, I just wanted to make it the same thickness as the four strand so you can barely see the difference um, the one thing that's different though is that this is just whoops not in the camera sorry about that just slightly shorter it came out to five and three quarter inches rather than six inches um, and that's one of the vagaries one of the things you have to deal with with viking knit um, but both of these could certainly be made into bracelets. Um, I won't do the others on camera, but I will try to put some instruction or some information together about how the different examples pulled through. But now I'd like to um, show you some of the ways that you can finish off your Viking knit. Let me just pull out the supplies. Okay. Here's the typical way that a bracelet or a necklace could be finished with Viking knit. This is a tube um, closure. It's magnetic. So you can see that it's silver and gold and I used that on this gold colored Viking knit. Um, and it, the ends are just glued together and then they snap together like that. When you're putting the bracelet on, just uh, this I always have trouble doing on camera. There we go. Just snaps in there like that. And you can wear the closure up above or you can wear the closure down below, depending on how you want to do that. Um, this is a uh, Viking knit bracelet I made uh, while camping with some kids. And I ha only had um, these cone beads uh, or end caps. So... What we did was we slid them on here. They could be glued on with uh, E6000 glue. They're a little wider than we need, but that's what we had. We made a, a loop of wire at the end and a hook on the other side. And then this is, let me do this the right way. Usually I can do this. There. So there is a hook and closure, a hook and loop closure, just a very rough and ready made one while camping. You can also uh, use um, manufactured hooks and loops. Um, the way that you uh, would add a hook and an eye, if you uh, weren't gluing something on or putting uh, a cap on is you would uh, put a heavier piece of wire through here um, and then attach the closure. I'm going to show you that in uh, the next video but here are some other things. I'm still uh, working on getting my twisting, uh, my twisted cones perfected but you put a piece of wire through um, the end of the Viking knit. So through here, a heavier wire. Um, and you can put a loop on here. You can, uh, you can fold it, put it back through a little bead and then wrap a cone. Here's just a, a, a an S hook and it makes a bracelet like that. 
Um, or you can put uh, a bead cap on the end with a wire through and do a wrapped loop and then add uh, a closure to that. You can also do something like this. This is something I was experimenting with. I've got a, I've used two pieces and I've joined them with this uh, knot. And then I've made um, a wrapped loop that I'm gonna glue on one end and then a wrapped hook that I'm gonna glue over these two pieces on the other end for a bracelet. So I'll come back with another video in terms of how to attach um, this particular one with the glue and probably one other type of clasp. And then there, I'm sure there are lots of videos or uh, tutorials online that I can point you to for adding your own clasps. Um, there's so many things that you can do with Viking Knit once you've uh, made the knit itself. Here's a bracelet with some large hole beads added. Uh, you could do a necklace. Here's a nice glass pendant I've re repurposed. Uh, here's a bracelet. This is a slide-on bracelet with a hematite bead and a couple of end caps. This is a, a larger one. Uh, I've just put this pendant on here. It's not a great pendant. It's got a flaw down in there, but uh, again, you could make a lovely necklace with the pendant on it. Uh, here's another uh, glass pendant. Make your own little uh, closure. So, oh, oh, and you can also just take a tube bead and you glue the uh, ends of the Viking knit into the tube bead and make yourself a bracelet that then you would just uh, roll on over your wrist. Thanks very much. It's Pat Hood from Passions and Pastimes and I hope you've enjoyed seeing how to make Viking knit. It's something I am very passionate about and I love teaching people uh, how to make it. Bye and see you soon. Mm -hmm.